Income Tax 2021-2022, Tax Types and Categories. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Categories or Types of Taxation. These are terms you'll often hear thrown around or discussed in debates about different tax laws when people are thinking about whether they agree or disagree with a particular tax law. They include flat or proportional tax, progressive tax, and a regressive tax. So these are often kind of catchphrases that you will hear in a debate when people are trying to express support or non-support for a particular law. So for example, if they disagree with the tax law, they will typically call it some form of regressive tax. If they agree with it, they might call it say a progressive tax because it sounds so nice, it's a progressive tax. But often these kind of uh, terms are gonna be thrown around without too much nuance once again. And usually they will be thrown around to support someone's particular viewpoint possibly a particular viewpoint that actually benefits them in some way. The reality of the tax law generally being more complex than that. So I would propose that what we want to do is first think about these definitions in their purest sense and then see how well they apply to a particular tax law, noting that most tax laws are more complex in that we won't be able to put a rigid definition and put the different types of taxes directly into say a flat tax group, a progressive tax group, a regressive tax group, because what we need to do is basically accept the fact that we're gonna have the necessary evil of taxation and then we need to be comparing and contrasting the different taxes and we'll end up using terms if we're looking at it in a more fair and nuanced type of way with terms such as that tax is a flatter type of tax than another type of tax or that tax is more progressive or less progressive than the prior tax law or this law is more regressive or less regressive than a tax law. Obviously in debates, when people are trying to disparage a certain tax, if they're against the tax law, they're gonna say, that's a regressive tax, it's just in this bucket of regressive tax. But obviously the real question is, well, if we don't have that tax, you're comparing it to the prior tax, is it more or less regressive than the prior tax, right? That tax is more progressive. Well, what does that mean? in relation to the alternative <laughs> type of taxation that you're proposing here. Uh, and, and that's gonna be the more nuanced view that you kinda gotta look at when you're actually looking at the policy. So a flat tax in its purest sense would be that there's just gonna be one rate. So if you will apply that to an income tax, for example, then you would have someone that pays, if they earn more income, they're gonna pay more tax because if they earn less income and you have a 10% tax rate, for example, they're gonna take 10% of the taxes. If they earn more income, then they're gonna take 10% of the higher number and they're gonna be paying more taxes. The benefit of a flat tax is that it's really easy to do. And the fact that it's really easy to do allows businesses to have more security and be able to basically calculate into the future a lot more confidently uh, with, a, with a simple flat tax type of system. A progressive tax is a system that where the, and this is where the tax code is at, so the in, our income tax is a form of progressive tax. But you can't just call it a progressive tax because you can always make something more or less progressive. All you would do is add more tables into the system. And when you add more tables, what you're doing is you're increasing the complexity, which could have negative impacts on decision makers trying to make decisions out into the future versus versus basically the idea that you're going to tax more at the higher end. So again, if you're arguing on the progressive tax, then of course you're saying it's not enough that you have people that are earning more, paying more just because they're paying the same rate. We want the rate to actually be increasing as the income increases. And again, that's a, you can, that's a fair argument to make, but we want to basically make sure that we put it in context of, well, how progressive is it and how many layers do we need uh, within, the, within the progressive structure and how much does that basically possibly hinder people's decision-making capability as business people are trying to make projections you know, out into the future. Obviously, as taxes go up, then there becomes kind of a disincentive to earn more revenue after a certain point. So these are kind of debates between these two. So you'll end up using terms like this tax is flatter, which you could say our progressive tax system, which is an income tax system, would be flatter, be flattened, if we took away some of the layers and we just had fewer layers. It would still be a progressive tax with multiple layers, but it would be flatter than it otherwise was 
or you could say that it would be less progressive, meaning having less layers than it otherwise would. Now, obviously the terms are a little bit uh, deceiving as well because the idea of something being progressive plusing up uh, is sounds a lot more beneficial than possibly a flat tax, which sounds kind of neutral. And obviously the term regressive tax sounds negative. It sounds like you're going backwards and no one wants to go backwards. Right? And the idea of a regressive tax would be a tax that's gonna fall more heavily on people that make less income, the people that are well, less well off. So if someone, if someone has a tax proposal and someone else is against it, what they want to do is put it in the bucket of regressive. Your tax is regressive. And that's gonna basically say, well, you're just trying to benefit you know, rich people is, the, is what the idea of, the, of that would be. And again, the question is, well, how regressive is it? I mean, is it more or less regressive than the alternative, whatever the other tax proposal will be? So a flat tax, this is an example of how you can think of something as kind of flat to a degree, but the law isn't exactly completely a flat tax. So most of the time, most laws will not fit just perfectly into one of these kind of buckets in one term that can be used to it. So for example, uh, the tax re rate remains the same over time. So a pure flat tax would be like, I'm gonna just charge 10%, whatever for your income tax, and no matter what you earn, I'm just gonna take 10% of it. And obviously as you earn more, that 10% is gonna result in more money that we're taking from you because you have higher earnings. The social security tax is, is kind of a form of flat tax, but it has a cap on it. So you can see it has a flat tax component, but then, but then it caps off. So that means it's gonna have some different uh, components than you would typically think of as a normal flat tax. So for example, on your payroll taxes, uh, when you get taxed on payroll and you look at your W-2, the employee side of it is usually generally 6.2%. Uh, and, it is, and it is what it is up to a certain point or level of income. So if I took the 40,000 times the 0 0.062, I would get the 2,480. And if you made 100,000, we would multiply it that times the 100,000 times the 0 0.062, and we would get the 6,200. So obviously the person that's earning 100,000 in this scenario is paying uh, more than the person owing that earned the 40,000 due to, even though they have the same rate. We don't have a progressive rate. The rate didn't go up. We've got the same rate that is being applied. However, there's a cap on, on the social security. So even though this is a simplified tax, the, the benefit of that is payroll taxes to that degree are actually a little bit easier because you can easily calculate the payroll tax. We don't have to say, okay, well, what is your earnings gonna be through the end of the year after a year's worth of earnings? Cause I have to multiply your tax rate as if it was earning for the entire year, even though I'm only talking about earnings <laughs> that are in the first week or something like that. It's a lot easier to do the flat tax calculation. However, there's a cap on it. And that means that people uh, that make over a certain amount are not gonna be paying into that cap and I'm not, I don't want to get into a lot of details on that, but if you're if you're trying to think about why that is in, in terms of the Social Security, uh, the general idea would be that we're not really sure in the United States whether Social Security should be like more of a benefit program or basically a federal kind of retirement program. We've been kind of debating that type of system. Uh, so is it a safety net program to help people out if they if they haven't weren't able to save during their lifetime, or is it something that you're paying into and you should get a benefit more like a retirement type of program if it's a retirement type of program then you would think as your income goes up you would get a benefit from it in terms of your of your benefit calculation at the point in time of when you're going to be receiving the social security benefit after your working life is over at at that point but after your income goes above a certain level there's you're, you're paying a lot of money into the social security but it's not going into any calculation generally for the benefits that you're going to be getting. So that's kind of the idea of why there would be a, you know, a cap at it at some point in time. So you could debate that. Is that, is that good or bad? What should the social security be? But you know, you can see it's a little bit more confusing than just, well, it's just a flat tax, but you can also see the benefit of the flat tax in it. It's easy to calculate. And if you're a business owner and you're trying to figure out, you know, how much you're going to pay someone and what your social security is and, and so on, that's a lot easier to do. A progressive tax is the, is the system, for example, our income tax system is a progressive tax system. That means you, when you calculate the tax, you're gonna have this table that's gonna be actually the calculation of the tax. 
Now, most people, if you were to if you were to ask them what a progressive tax system, they probably couldn't tell you even that much. They would just say, well, the tax rate goes up maybe as as your income goes up. But it's a little it's a lot more nuanced than that. And they certainly most likely wouldn't be able to actually calculate or describe how the tax rate is going to be calculated. That's the problem. Uh, because and you might say, well, that's not a problem because you just all you get is tax software and you figure that out and you could do that. But the pro there's still kind of a problem with projections. Business owners are trying to, to think about and, and people that are working and so on and budgeting and whatnot are trying to think about how much tax they're going to owe. And, and if they owe the first thousand dollars when you earn your first thousand dollars in the year, you can't just multiply it times a flat tax or a flat rate or any rate, right? You, because you don't know what your tax rate's going to be until your earnings are complete at the end of the year. So it's really, it really does kind of make it a lot more complex to project out into the future, to make decisions out into, into the future because your taxes will be a whole lot different based on your income level and you don't really know what they are until the end of the year. So the, the general idea of it would be that you got, you've got your first tax rate is going to be taxed at 0 to 9,950 uh, here and so that would be at we're going to say the 10% tax rate and then we're going to move up so when people say if I earn any more money I'm going to go up to the next tax bracket now that doesn't mean if you go up to the next tax bracket this is a misconception as well that uh, that is that is possibly used to to uh, unfairly downgrade the progressive tax system saying well that doesn't make any sense because as I go up to 12% or as I go up to 37% all the way down here why would I work at all at 37% because because now my tax rate is high enough that it's a disincentive to work. Well, you're not getting taxed 37% on the entire thing. You're only getting taxed 37% on the dollar amount that's over that threshold. So there is a disincentive for people to work as the tax rate goes up, but but that disincentive kind of caps out. You still have this, you know, the same more incentive at the lower tax rate. And then, so people might say, I'm not going to earn that next dollar because you took more money from me. I'm not going to earn the next dollar over above that because it's no longer worth it. That's kind of the danger when taxes get get too high. And you can clearly see that because obviously if the government took 100 percent of your revenue, would you work? No, you wouldn't you wouldn't work. Right. So if, if you looked at the curve, basically for taxation, the, the taxes as the tax rate goes up, government revenue goes up. Right. But at some point when the tax rate goes up, it's got to go back down. Uh, the, the revenue is actually going to go back down because we know that way down here, if they taxed 100 percent, then no one would work. Right. There would be no incentive to work because they would just take you just they would just take all everything that you earned. So the question is that you would think there's a curve. So the, there's a question of, well, how much revenue, how much more revenue is the government picking up or taking in as they increase, you know, the tax rate? So that's going to be, you know, one of the questions. So if we go from if we go from the 10 percent, notice if I take 10 percent of the nine thousand nine fifty, then this table over here saying if you're in the 12 percent tax bracket, we're just going to take the 9,950 plus 12 percent of the amount over 9,950. Why? Because we taxed the first 9,950 at 10 percent, which is 995 about. And then the difference between uh, the, what you earned if you're within this bracket, some number below 40,500 is what you are then going to be paying 12 percent on. And then if you go down to the next tier, you've got the 22 percent bracket. So that means that if you made over 40,526, then the amount of the 40,526 is now being taxed at 10% and then at 12% up to the 40,526. And then the difference between the 40,526 and where your income is, is going to be taxed at the 24%. So they can simplify that by basically saying, we're gonna take 4,664, which is about the 10% and the 12% portion, and then you have to calculate the 22% of the amount over the 40,525 and so on and so forth. If we go on to the next one, 86,376 is the amount that includes this 14,751 includes the three brackets, the 10, the 12 and the 22. And then you have to calculate the rest of your income based on the higher bracket of the 24. And then if you go up to here, the 164,960, uh, uh, nine, 
26 is calculated based on 24, 22, 12, and, and uh, 10, and so on. And notice if you, if you make a, you know, a lot of money, you're being taxed at multiple brackets. So if you were to actually calculate this like in Excel, it would be kind of a complex calculation. Again, the computer basically does this. Now, if you have tax software and you're actually doing the taxes, it's not as big a problem when you're actually doing the taxes because the software is going to do it for you and you'll just basically calculate it out. But when you're projecting out into the future, that's when it's going to be a kind of more of an issue. And when you're talking to people about their tax rate, then you're, you've got a, you've got an issue of like, well, this is your highest tax bracket, but you also can think about your average tax rate. And you can and you also have to think about your average tax rate on taxable income as opposed to your actual income before deductions and before, you know, credits and so on that are going to be involved as well. So it becomes, you know, somewhat complex to actually know how much tax you're paying with it with the as the tax brackets become more complex. Now, you could propose tax laws and start to say, OK, would it be beneficial, say, for us to have instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiers to only have maybe three tiers? and have it that would be less progressive or more flat or would it be better for us to have more tiers in here and that would basically make it more progressive and less flat so really what you're talking about oftentimes is is it more or less of a, of a flat or progressive tax now a regressive tax is usually going to be something that's going to be something that people will use when they're trying to talk down the tax the tax rate decreases as wage uh, base increases in other words, the tax falls more heavily on people that are have lower income. It's going to fall more heavily on people of lower income so that it's going to be regressive and people are going to say, well, that's obviously not fair. You don't want it to be regressive. If people are making more income, then they should be paying more taxes. It shouldn't be going the other way around. So tax resulting in a larger percent taking from low income earners is another way that you can think about that. And a category that people often bring up is going to be sales tax. Now, again, the problem is with this is, is that that's not really fair to just apply it out to complete sales tax because the tax code is usually more complex than just to say, well, that tax is regressive. And again, you'll note that when people don't like a particular tax, what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, that's a regressive tax. I have categorized it into this bucket and now and now you can't touch it anymore because it's it's got cooties or something like that right but really the question is is it is it more regressive or less regressive than the alternative so in other words if you think about a sales tax the reason in its classical form you would think it be regressive is because if you earn all your money if all your money that you are earning goes to buying the necessities food gas clothes and and so on then you're paying all of your all of your uh, money is being taxed right but if you are earning more than you need to spend, if you're saving some of your money, then you're not spending all of your money. Only a portion of your money is being subject to the sales tax. And therefore, the sales tax will generally incentivize savings. So sales tax is usually something that's going to incentivize savings, whereas an income tax will often possibly incentivize more on the spending side of things. And that, and that is true on the sales tax, right? If you were to say there's a flat sales tax on everything that you purchase, we're gonna apply a sales tax. When you buy something, we apply whatever, a 10% sales tax on it, and you pay 10% no matter what you buy. And that would mean that people that have to spend all their money to buy bread are gonna be paying more than people that, uh, that don't have to spend all their money and can save some of their money and not have to pay money on the sales tax. However, you can easily change that by just saying, well, what if we just say we're not going to charge sales tax on some of the necessities? We're not going to charge sales tax on bread. We're not going to charge sales tax on groceries. We're not going to charge sales tax on food, possibly gas and utilities and so on, electric. That's the stuff that people spend that are in the lower income spend all their money on. And therefore, if there's no sales tax on those things, now the sales tax no longer falls on the low income earners. It falls all on the higher income earners who are using their money to purchase stuff. And it falls on earners who are more are buying things that are more extravagant, like your yacht is going to cost you a lot of sales tax if you're subject uh, to the sales tax. So you can see again, uh, it, these, these kind of laws, people often see these laws and they say, well, as soon as they hear something like, well, it's a sales tax, that's regressive. I won't tell you know, it's that's it's been put in the category. 
I know that, and so, and so they never look at anything a little bit more nuanced than that. So really these kind of terms, you gotta, you gotta look at them and say, okay, who is the person saying what the, what the term is? Do they have any incentive on, on why they would be in a proponent or not liking this tax? And, and then basically compare what they're saying about the tax to the alternative, because we know there's gonna be a necessary evil of taxes. The question is, is this tax relatively better than the alternative?